1954, Charlie Carter and George Verhagen, the Carr and Ver in Carver, started building mahogany runabouts in Milwaukee. As the company expanded, they relocated to Pulaski, Wisconsin, and added small cruisers to the boat line. Switching to fiberglass construction in the 70s, the company continued to expand and is now one of the larger producers of luxury yachts, so there's plenty in the used market to choose from. Today on Fooditis, we're going to take a look at a 1997 405 motor yacht. Boarding the 405 from a low dock or from the water was made easier when Carver added molded steps and handrails to access the after sun deck. The sun deck with hardtop and custom canvas provides plenty of room and a standard refreshment center for entertaining. Three steps lead up to the roomy flybridge under the binami top. A swivel bucket seat is provided for the captain and ample bench seats are provided for and after the helm console for guests. The helm is well laid out and provides good sight lines and this 1997 had a full complement of electronics that shouldn't require updating for a while. Access for it on the 405 is excellent due to the wide side decks with sturdy rails and the foredeck is flat enough for sure footing when handling the ground tackle. One of the attractions of a 40 foot plus motor yacht is the abundance of space and the Carver 405 is no exception. The salon is bright and airy with plenty of room to relax and the galley down layout in combination with the dinette are ideal for dining aboard. In the salon, this 405 had maple cabinetry and maple hardwood flooring rather than carpet. The salon has an L-shaped ultra leather sofa, single tub chair, and a standard TV VCR stereo setup typical to the 90s. The dinette has ample seating for four or more, something not found on many new boats. The galley is well equipped with a three-quarter size fridge, freezer, large sink, electric range and oven, and microwave. The forward cabin has an angled berth that makes it a little tight for two, but has plenty of storage under the berth and in the lockers. The guest or day head is fiberglass for easy cleanup, handy since the shower uses the same space. The aft cabin is quite spacious with an oversized Queen Island berth with inner spring mattress, flanked by seats for dressing. Maple cabinets abound for clothing and gear, and large opening ports covered with Venetian blinds that needed replacing provide ventilation and natural light. The master head is adequate for a yacht of this size, and it does have a separate shower stall. Access to the engine room is through the salon sole, where room to work around the engines, generator, and other systems was reasonable. The Cummins 315Bs are also a desirable upgrade from standard gas power. Out on the water, test conditions were ideal, so I started with some acceleration runs. The 315 horsepower diesel started off slowly, but picked up the pace when the turbo spooled up, planing the 28,000 pound 405 in 19 seconds. While not a high-speed cruiser, lightly loaded, we saw a top speed just shy of 30 miles per hour at 2,800 RPM. At a much more fuel-efficient setting of 2,000 RPM, the big carver settled in nicely at 18 miles per hour. Handling was what one would expect for a 40-foot hull with a 13-foot 10-inch beam. The turning radius was large, but the handling was predictable. All hull designs are a compromise, with the carver 405s being stable at rest it did, however, show a tendency to plow and pound a bit at cruise. A motor yacht like this 11-year-old Carver 405 can be a really great buy, but remember before you make a firm offer to have the boat checked out from stem to stern by a qualified surveyor so you know exactly what you're getting.